Welcome to the Software Overview course, where we'll take you through all the various sections and components of the QSYS Designer software. This software allows you to architect the signal flow and processing of all of your inputs and outputs into a single file, which you then save to the core so that it can manage your audio according to your design. The first step is, of course, downloading and installing the software. You can always find the latest version of QSYS Designer software on the QSC website, which will arrive as a zipped archive. Within this archive, there are actually three different installation options. The QSYS Designer installer, as well as two other files to install the administrator tool or the UCI viewer tool. The administrator tool is also accessible within the QSYS Designer software, but if you wanted someone to be able to adjust administrator settings without accessing the architecture of the design, you could install the administrator on their system rather than the QSYS Designer. The UCI viewer tool, on the other hand, will allow your PC to display a control interface that's part of the design. These will both make more sense once you're more familiar with the software. It's important to note now that the QSYS Designer software is only available for the Windows operating system. If you're using a Mac, you'll need to run Windows within your Mac operating system by using a program such as Parallels or Boot Camp. Once in a Windows environment, you can access the QSYS Designer software. Once the software is installed, simply double-click it to launch the program. You'll notice that the workspace is divided into three sections. The blank white workspace in the center is called the schematic. This is where you'll design your system, connect and organize components, control audio flow, etc. The left side pane over here has six accordion style panels. The inventory will list all of the physical devices that are a part of your system. The schematic pages lets you navigate different sections of your design. User control interfaces is where you'll design the screen that users will use to interact with the system. Snapshots will let you save and recall the settings of the controls in your design. Named controls will expose controls to be accessed by third-party devices. And the design inspector will analyze your design for errors. Don't worry, we'll go deeper into each of these panels later in the training. Finally, we have the right side pane that has different panels you can expand or collapse using these little arrows. The graphic tools let you add some graphics or text to your design. The schematic library contains a list of all the processing, mixing, and routing components that you'll use to manage your audio. Then there's the user library, which will start out empty, but later you can save items here for pre-configured components or groups of components that you'd like to have quick access to. Whenever you select an object in your schematic, there will be another panel in this area labeled Properties that lets you configure the selected object. All right, so let's learn some of the vocabulary that the software uses. Like I said, the main workspace is called the schematic. You can drag objects from the side panes into the schematic, and these are called components. For instance, I can open the schematic library and drag a gain component into the schematic. You can see that it's labeled gain, but if you wanted to rename it, you can simply start typing to change its title. You'll notice that there are these little shapes on the sides of it. These are called pins, and they represent available inputs and outputs, so you can wire this component to another component. Pins on the left side is audio coming into the component, and pins on the right side is audio leaving the component, so audio flows from left to right. There are different shaped pins for different types of connections, and you can only connect them if they're the same shape. These circular pins represent an audio signal. Now, if you want to make some room for yourself, you can collapse or expand these side panes by clicking the little double arrow icon, or by dragging their border to make them smaller or larger. You can zoom in and out of the schematic by holding the control key and scrolling your mouse wheel, or you could zoom in and out of the side panes as well by holding control and shift while you do so. Now, you can position your components anywhere you want in your schematic. You may notice there's no grid, but the software uses alignment lines to keep everything well organized. 
here, I'll grab another component. Let's pick an audio player. And you'll notice as we move it around, these red alignment lines pop up to let us snap the components to parallel lines. You can have them intersect and a green vertex will show you where they're touching. Now if for some reason you have overlapping components, then you can change which one is on top by right clicking and picking a new option in this order submenu. In this case, you would want to use the bring to forward or bring to back buttons to relayer these objects. If you select multiple components, you can also organize them with the align, distribute, and pack tools, which are quick ways to visually organize the components in your design. Here's an important tip you may want to note. When you're selecting multiple items, you can do so in two ways. And if you use AutoCAD, you'll be familiar with this. And if not, well, here's a free tutorial. When you make a selection box, moving your cursor from left to right, then anything that is fully enclosed in the box will be selected. You'll notice that this gain is not fully enclosed, so it will not be selected. But if you make your selection box moving from right to left, anything that is touched by the selection box is selected. You see the difference? Anyways, let's look at some of the other things we can do with components. As I mentioned earlier, if you select a component, you can reconfigure it using its properties panel in the right side pane. Here you can do simple things like change its color or its position, but you can also restructure the component's settings or change the number of input and output channels available. These properties will vary depending on the component itself. Once a component is configured to your purposes, then its most important part will be its control panel. If you double click a component, you see its control panel, which adjusts the manner in which it affects the audio in your design. Every object inside a control panel is called a control. However, you'll notice that clicking on a control doesn't do anything right now. The reason for that is a very important concept regarding which mode you're currently in. So far, we've been working in design mode, which is a purely structural mode. We can move components around and wire them together, change their properties and such, but we can't adjust any controls or actually process any audio in this mode. Think of it like the plumbing in your house. If you want to move the pipes around, you have to make sure the water's off. So once we start processing audio, you'll no longer be able to move components, change their wiring, or their properties. To start processing audio, we need to save our design to Acusis Core and enter Run Mode. You can do this by going to the File menu and selecting Save to Core and Run, or simply by pressing F5. However, my laptop isn't currently networked to a core. And oftentimes, when working on a design, you might not even have access to one. So, there is a third mode called Emulation Mode. You can enter Emulation Mode by going to the File menu and selecting Emulate, or by pressing F6. This will allow you to make all the adjustments within the control panels that you'd like, as well as give you access to the Administrator tool, which we'll look at in a later course. You'll probably use emulation mode a lot during this training series, unless you have a core you're able to play with. You can do a lot in emulation mode, but you can't do everything. For instance, you won't be able to actually play anything in this audio player, since the core is required to actually process audio. But you can set your gain knobs, you can change buttons, and prepare your design as much as possible so that it will be ready to run when you do connect to a core. For now, best memorize these shortcut keys. F5 connects to the core to enter run mode, F6 enters emulation mode when you don't have a core handy, and F7 will disconnect from either of these modes and return you to design mode. The biggest visual cue as to which mode you're in is the right hand pane. It is only available in design mode, so you'll notice that it disappears when you enter emulation mode or are connected to a core. Also, the QSIS administrator and system mute button are only available in emulation mode or run mode. So if you're trying to do something and you can't figure out why you can't move a component or adjust a control, you're probably simply in the wrong mode. All right, that is a general run through of the software's layout. In the next section, let's actually add some inventory items and connect to a core. Thanks, we'll see you next time.